Hey guys, it's Ornlu. So back when AOE2DE first came out, Nilly asked me to help him out with the pronunciations for the new sieves and units, so I ended up making a little video for him just going through the last con sieves. Recently, this was actually brought up on Twitter with T90 asking for an AOE2 pronunciation guide. Then, Nilly mentioned that I made that video for him a couple years ago, and T90 asked that I make it public. So, I was going to do just that, but then decided that the video was pretty outdated, thrown together in like five minutes, and only talked about the last con sieves. Therefore, instead of just doing the easy thing and clicking two buttons, I'm going to give myself several more hours of work and just make a completely new pronunciation guide for the various sieves, units, and texts in AOE2DE, and in that way it could perhaps be a bit better presented and just more helpful to more people. As a caster myself, I can attest to the fact that a lot of stuff in the game is either difficult or unintuitive to pronounce. I do my best to use the correct pronunciations in my casting and my YouTubing, but with there being 39 sieves in the game right now, covering tons of different languages and cultures from around the world, things can get tricky. So for this video, I'm just going to go through some of the sieve names, unique units, and unique text that might be a bit more difficult for a native English speaker, and then just do my best to give you guys the proper pronunciation, as well as a brief explanation as to what those words or phrases actually refer to. Now, before I jump in, I do just want to qualify this by saying that I myself am a native English speaker, so I'm sure that anyone watching this that speaks one of these languages is still going to laugh at me. Still, I will do my best to at least get close to the correct pronunciation, even if I say it with a very painful amount. American accent. Of course, feel free to help out in the comments section below with other words or phrases of your language that are represented in AoE2. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. Starting with the Aztecs, I definitely can see their Castle Age unique tech at Ladl being tricky to pronounce. The word comes from the Nohaudl language of central Mexico, which is what the Aztecs and their neighbors spoke. Essentially, an Atlatl is a device used by the Aztecs to launch javelins further and with more force. So I'd say that its in-game effect of increasing skirmisher range and damage makes plenty of sense. Okay, next is Bohemians, our first Dawn of the Duke's civilization. Since the Civ is still quite new at the time of recording, I'm just going to go through all of their unique units and techs. First, we have their castle unique unit, the Hussite Wagon, as well as their Imperial Age unique tech, Hussite Reforms. Same stem there. In case you haven't played the Jan Zizka campaign yet, the Hussites were a group in Bohemia that followed the teachings of Jan Hus, who is a murdered critic of the Catholic Church in the early 1400s. So yeah, Jan Hus, Hussites, that checks out. The Hussite Wagon itself was a part of the military innovation of the Hussites, most of whom were poor peasants, not professional soldiers. In order to gain the upper hand, the Hussites would use wagons to protect their soldiers that could fire cannons cannons, firearms, and arrows at an oncoming charge of armored knights. I think that the in-game representation of that is pretty cool, considering how hard that is to actually put in Age of Empires. Their Castle Age unique tech is Wagenberg Tactics, which pretty much refers to the innovative military tactics of the Hussites, particularly vis-a-vis -vis wagons. Lastly, we have their second unique unit, the Bohemian Upgrade to the Bombard Cannon. I'll be honest, I have a really hard time saying this one, but my Czech viewers have done their best to educate me. I believe it's pronounced something like Hofnitze. Regardless of my butcher, of that, this was a type of large cannon developed in Bohemia that would eventually become the root for the English word howitzer. Moving right along to the Burgundians, a toughie to pronounce for anyone who doesn't speak French is their castle unique unit, the Coustier. Yes, you don't pronounce like half the letters of the word, but that's French for you. The Coustier was historically a low-level class of professional soldier in France and Burgundy in and around the 1400s. These guys were basically a step down from knights, but a step up from a squire or a common men-at-arms. I'm not too sure where the charge attack mechanic comes from, but having the unit be a bit of a cheaper but less powerful version of the knight line does make sense for the Coustier in-game. So this sieve right here with the cool mask with the mustache. Logic would indicate that it's pronounced cumins, but in reality it's pronounced cumins, kind of like Q-mans. Super brief TLDR of the Cuban civilization, they were a Turkic people from Eurasia, holding a massive loose confederation of tribes from modern day Kazakhstan all the way to Ukraine. In case you haven't played the Kotian Khan campaign, these guys would eventually end up fighting the Rus a bunch, but be forced to flee due to the Mongol invasion of Genghis Khan. They would spread out both west and south, largely integrating with the people who lived there. In many cases, they would assist their new neighbors in fighting against the Mongols. The most famous of these were a group of Cumans that went on to establish the Mamluk Sultanate in the Middle East. East. 
Next is Italians, and although most of their stuff here is quite straightforward, I did want to mention that their Castle Age unique tech is not Pavise, but rather Pavisa. Cause, you know, Italian. In reality, a Pavisa is a big ol' shield that was used by archers to protect them from incoming arrows. You can actually see that the Genoese crossbowmen use them in-game. And since the tech is literally a shield, I'd say that the effect of giving archers extra armor makes a lot of sense. The Condottiero part was definitely just thrown in for balance reasons. So, most people I know, including myself, pronounce this next as Khmer. However, the technically correct pronunciation is actually Kume. Again, super brief TLDR. The Kume Empire was a massive entity in Southeast Asia from much of the Middle Ages, centered around modern-day Cambodia, whose people are still called Kume. These were the guys that built Angkor Wat and eventually controlled most of Southeast Asia. We actually don't know exactly what caused the empire to collapse in the early 1400s, but of course historians have theorized a number of factors, many of which are likely true at least to some degree. Oh boy, Koreans. The sieve that I personally study for my university degree. I better nail the pronunciation of these unique texts, lest I disappoint all of my Korean history and language instructors over the last several years. So their current Castle Age unique tech is Upsong, which more or less translates to Tower Fortress. In particular, this was the name given to an old fort located within the city of Busan in southeastern Korea that was notably the first line of defense against the Japanese when they invaded the peninsula in 1592. Even if there really isn't anything that would indicate increasing the range of towers, it nonetheless does make sense that Upsong benefits your defense. Then we have the Korean Imperial Age unique tech Shin Kichon. Historically, these were the rockets fired by the Kwacha siege weapon, which were used extensively during the same Japanese invasion of Korea. A Kwacha was an early artillery unit that fired a bunch of Shin Kichon rockets at once. So even though the Hwacha itself doesn't exist in the game, it's the reason that Ensemble made Koreans have one of the best onager lines in the game, as sort of an homage to the Hwacha. And of course, Shin Kichon does improve your onagers by giving them more range. So with Lithuanians we have their unique unit, the Latus. Simple enough. However, what gets tricky is what to call a group of them. It's not latuses or even simply latus. The correct pluralization is actually something like leisai, which is spelled l-e-i-c with a little chevron i-a-i. I couldn't find a pronunciation guide online, but that's generally the correct idea. To the best of my understanding, the Leisai were a low-level class of nobility in medieval Lithuania who did most of the groundwork when it came to enforcing the law, leading soldiers in combat, and other such small-scale governance. Next we have this sieve, which myself and most others call the Magyars, because that's how it looks like it should be pronounced. Now, Lidakor and any other Hungarians will probably laugh at my attempt at this, but the technically correct pronunciation is something like Magyars, with the G being almost silent. More tweet-length history for this sieve. The Magyars were a nomadic people native to Eurasia that migrated to the European heartland in the 800s, eventually settling in the Pannonian Basin, which is more or less modern-day Hungary. Although they did eventually convert to Christianity and created a state similar to that of their neighbors, they still retain their distinct identity, and even to this day, the Magyar language is kind of its own thing, more closely related to Finnish and Estonian than the various Germanic, Slavic, and Romance languages of the area. For Malay, most names are pretty straightforward, but I do want to clarify that their Castle Age unique tech is Thalassocracy. This isn't actually a Malay word at all, but is rather an English word with Greek roots. In Greek, Thalassa, or something like that, means sea, and the ocracy suffix means rule by. So in this case, Thalassocracy just means rule by controlling the sea. And that's exactly what the various Malay empires were all about, what with Nusantara being a bunch of islands, and with the Strait of Malacca in particular being a critical choke point between trade from east to west. In-game, having Thalassocracy boosts your naval defenses by upgrading your docks to harbors, so that makes all sorts of sense. Now for Mayans, who a little while ago had their Castle Age unique tech changed. It used to be Obsidian Arrows, which, although quite straightforward to pronounce, was really, really unfun to play against, so that was replaced with Hulche Javelineers. The apostrophe in Hulche definitely helps with the pronunciation, at least to me, but I still thought it worth mentioning. Historically, the Hulche was essentially the Mayan version of the Atlatl that I talked about earlier, so again, having the tech buff skirmishers seems good to me. Alrighty, so next up is the second Dawn of the Duke Civ, the Poles. Like Bohemians, I'm just going to go through all of their unique things since they are a new sieve. Again, any Polish viewers will likely still laugh at my pronunciation, but this should at least be pretty close to accurate. First, their unique unit is the Obuk. So, with a long O, and then boo, like what you say after I make an Ornlu joke, and then the CH at the end makes a soft K sound. Altogether, it should be Obuk. 
The name of the unit actually refers to their weapon, aka that huge warhammer thing that they wield. I don't know where the armor shredding ability comes from, but considering how scary that obuk looks, I can definitely imagine that thing crushing some armor. The Poles also have a unique building, which is their special mill, the Folwark. This one is nice and easy to pronounce, thankfully. Historically, this was a large farm in medieval Poland, so the fact that it is a large mill in-game that can boost your farming eco definitely all checks out. For their unique text, the Castle Age one is pronounced something like Szlachta privileges. The Szlachta were a class of nobility in medieval Poland, so I guess one of their privileges is getting knights very cheap, or something. Lastly, for Poles, we have their Imperial Age unique tech, Lechitic Legacy. The Lechites were the first Slavic people to settle in the area that would become Poland. However, I'm not entirely sure how you get trampled damage for scouts from the legacy of the Lechites, but hey, it's a cool effect, so I'm not complaining. Next, Sicilians recently got a new unique tech which is very much the talk of the town. Their lousy Imperial Age UT scootage, which was kind of like paper money, was replaced by Hauberk, which gives knights and cavalier plus one, plus two armor. Essentially, it's plate barding armor that you can get on top of your other plate barding armor. In real life, the Hauberk was a chainmail shirt used throughout the Middle Ages. The connection between that and giving knights extra armor is pretty straightforward. For Slavs, I wanted to talk about one of my very favorite unique techs, Druzhina. Yes, Druzhina, not Druzhina. This tech gives your infantry units 5 trample damage, instantly transforming otherwise generic swordsmen and pikemen into devastating damage dealers in large fights. In history, the Druzhina were a type of warrior that served a Slavic chieftain. Most famous of these were probably the Varangians, some of whom would go on to serve various Byzantine emperors. I'm not sure where the trample damage comes from logically, but making your infantry stronger is definitely something that does doesn't feel like too much of a stretch with this technology. Lastly for today, we have this sieve. They are not the Tatars, nor the Tartars, because that's a type of seafood sauce, nor are they even the Tater Tots, because that one doesn't make any sense and also makes me hungry. Jokes aside, this civilization is actually correctly pronounced Tatars, with the emphasis on the second A instead of the second T. One last microhistory lesson today, the Tatars are a broad group of people native to Central and Northeast Asia, more closely related to the Turks than the Mongols. Of course, they would largely become a part of the Mongol horde under Genghis Khan, which would in turn lead to the incorrect designations of Europeans towards the various steppe nomads for hundreds and hundreds of years. That said, the in-game Tatars very much represent the Timurids, aka the empire created by Tamerlane. Also, their unique unit is spelled Keshik, but is pronounced closer to Keshig, with a G at the end instead of a K. In fact, some romanizations of the word replace the last K with a G. Regardless, these medium cavalry units in-game are based off of the royal guards of the Mongol and Tatar empires. Alrighty, so that's going to be it for this little pronunciation guide video. I hope you found it useful and or interesting. What I went over here is certainly not a complete list, so feel free to mention how your IRL sieve is represented in AoE 2. Above all, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time!